out and visit my dad. Um, I, I love my dad, he's super cool, and he's at a skilled nursing facility, which is which is nice for him, he's getting the help that he needs, but also nice for me because like it's wheelchair accessible. I don't get to visit very many people because they have stairs, but not him. And so I can go and visit him, and that's what we're gonna go do. I would go by myself and take my take my daughter with me, um, but I'm seven months pregnant and I'm needing a little bit of help, huh Daisy? We are ready to go, it's gonna be super fun, and uh, you're gonna hang out with us. This is the Subaru Baja, which is super nice for Meg because it transfers just straight across into a car versus a big truck or a van. And so is a bed. So is a bed. And this is a nice shifter knob because you don't have to push any buttons. You can just move it. It works really nice. And how do you drive, Meg? Awesomely. Well, <laughs> I'm in the 90th percentile of drivers. That's scariness. No. <laughs> okay, but for reals. How do I drive? Yeah. Like, like a champion? You don't use your feet, obviously. Oh, oh, how do I drive? <laughs> yes. In addition to being an excellent driver, I use this little bar right here. It's actually hooked up to the pedals. Okay. So I push down and it's gas. And then I can push forward and it's brake. And then I've got this little necker knob that's illegal for anyone except me and policemen. Was there a reason you chose that kind of knob versus there's those kind that like you weave your hand into? Yeah, like it's a three prong, yeah. a three prong thing. I, I'm still, I don't like to feel like I'm attached to something. So, so usually a quadriplegic like me would use a three prong thing, but I mean, my steering wheel has got like holes in it and I can, A lot of times I'll drive with my hand on the top of the steering wheel and I'll use my elbow. So my dad taught me how to do three things. He taught me how to play baseball, how to pray, and how to kill someone with my bare hands. Three different ways. So my dad was in the military. He was in the army intelligence. And he, he still wanted two different countries. I mean, he's super old. <laughs> I don't know what they'd do if they found him. time until he wasn't a nuisance anymore, I guess. He's um, pretty, pretty busy. He joined the church that we belong to like a long time ago. Um, and we'd have family home evenings, like family nights, where we'd watch these movies. These like really, really scary movies. That's usually not what you do on family home evening, but we'd watch these really scary war movies. And to this day, the scariest sound that anyone says to me is, shut your eyes, you know? <laughs> Because when I was a kid, if you didn't close your eyes, you had nightmares for the rest of your life. He's a really big baseball fan. He grew up wanting to be a baseball player. And he was drafted by the Minnesota Athletics once upon a time, forever ago. And, but he never got to play because, um, because he broke his leg in a car accident. And then he joined the military and the rest is history. Didn't he, like for one of those family nights, isn't that where he taught you how to kill people? Yes. Yeah. For our spiritual lesson, we learned how to kill someone three different ways, depending on how they came at you. So luckily I'm okay because Meg's hams don't work anymore, so. But the knowledge is there. But you cannot actually make the actions with paralyzed hands, probably, <laughs> right? Not, not terribly effectively. So I'm, I'm safe from being killed by Meg <laughs> with her bare hands. But not the rest of my family. <laughs> so it's kind of sad. He's getting older. At least that happens in life. And his health isn't the greatest. So he's living at the veteran's home. And we're on our way to go visit him. Bringing him some cookies with pecans because he's from Georgia. And...
Scouts just left me. <laughs> They're already at the door, are they? So my question is, so Meg told us that when she was, when you, she was younger, her and her siblings, that you guys had a family home evening where you taught them all how to kill people in three different ways with, with their hands. Yes. <laughs> was it three different ways? Is that, is that right? Yeah, let me see. <laughs> One there. Two there. And uh, if you hit him in the chest hard enough over the heart, that could be enough to kill him. <laughs> Three different ways. You girls remember that. How old were you, Meg, when you learned this? I don't remember. I could walk. <laughs> I could walk. They, they were, yeah, Meg was uh, six or seven. <laughs> Did you let her practice on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, do you have any questions? Yeah, they do. Look in Grandpa's eyes and ask him. What does a giraffe say when it's mad? <laughs> what my throat itches. Is that what it says? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what does a giraffe say when it's mad? I don't know. Oh, what is she it, was just hoping you knew. What does a giraffe sound like, Daisy? Yeah, what does a giraffe sound like? I don't know. <laughs> boy, I heard that reminds me of a joke. Man talking joke? to his daughter. You need, that, you need that boyfriend like a giraffe needs a sore throat. <laughs> where I get my grit. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching and until next time remember that when your life gets too hard to stand just keep on rolling. <laughs>